always love tapping into your brain because you have been covering the convention, the RNC, the DNC for many, many years. Yes. You just came back from actually doing just that at the Republican convention and, mm -hmm. of course, working on all several uh, American networks. So we need to talk about the climate. What was it like inside there and how did it differ from previous elections? Well, I've, I've never seen anything like it. I've been to the DNC since 1988 in Atlanta and, and the RNC since 1992 in Houston. And there was stuff that was happening there that was absolutely unprecedented. I mean, I was in the upper bowl on night two, and, you know, 30, 40 percent of the seats in the upper bowl were empty. I've absolutely never seen anything like that before. The Republicans and Trump needed this, camp, this, this convention to go very, very well. The only talking point coming out of day one was Melania's speech and the plagiarism. I thought the media was a little bit heavy-handed with that situation. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, Ted Cruz ended his political career, completely shot himself in the foot. I've never been at a convention where he didn't, it wasn't like soaring oratory, but he had people hanging on every word, and it was going very, very well. And then they wanted him to endorse Trump, and when he didn't, 25,000 people, and it sounded much worse in the room than it did on television, rose to their feet and booed this guy off the stage. I've never seen anything like it. At least. Kasich had the decency to stay away. Jeb Bush had the decency to stay away. They didn't come there, ask for a speaking spot in prime time, and then disrespect and slap the nominee in yeah. the face by not endorsing him. I found that to be very odd. Why would he do that then? What does that serve? I guess he thinks that there's some sort of benefit by he'll be able to play the card like I was the one that stood up to Trump, and he thinks there'll be some sort of political value for him down the road. I personally think unless he's, he's not going to be able to run as a Democrat, because he's too conservative, and he's done with the Republican Party, as far as I'm concerned. If he's interested in mm. spinning off some uber-conservative third party, then maybe he's got a shot there. And, of course, Donald Trump went on to deliver a 75-minute speech, the longest since 1972. Mm -hmm. A lot of rhetoric, a lot of talking about ending violence, creating, you know, a heavier, darker tone rather than a celebratory one about where uh, America is and stands right now, but not yeah. really ever offering any platforms or solutions as to how he will fix them. Well, that's the contrast that you're going to see between the DNC and the RNC. You saw a lot of rhetoric, a lot of propaganda, a lot of darkness, a lot of anger, no specifics, no solutions, no, no policies. When Donald Trump says, I'm going to take care of this problem with crime in, the, in America, and I'm going to take care of it real fast, I can't believe the audience sits there and claps. I mean, we've got to move beyond this a year later and get into more substance and get into more specifics and, and we're a year into this campaign and he's done none of that. Well and it, it, it really is fear mongering because he's managed this far. Nobody, everybody said he would not end up right here and here he is. So he is doing something right in terms of the power of a soundbite which he has mastered. But that's what I, I don't understand in America there's all this anger. We are in such better shape than we were seven years ago. Obama has done a terrific job. Is there issues? Yes. Is there room for improvement? Yes. Are there new problems that didn't exist before? Yes, but by and large, the country is moving. I mean, from a Canadian perspective, would you say that we're in better shape than when George Bush Jr. left office? I'd say yes, but I'm going to get hate tweets for saying that. Well, okay, well, yeah, right? I, it's I, the way I don't it mean is. to put you on the spot, it's but okay. I think in many, many, many ways, not just the economy. And that's also part of the problem. Americans vote and think too much with their pocketbook. The Republican Party is the party of I and me, and the Democratic Party is the party of us and we. And I'm just tired of everybody thinking about <clears throat> what's in their narrow self-interest rather than what's in the interest of the community at large or the country at large. And yeah. <clears throat> I get very frustrated with people saying that we're not better off today. And they keep, and when he says he's tapping into their insecurity and their financial insecurity, which, by the way, we're doing not just based on where the stock, where the stock market's knocking on the door of 20,000. It's not just based on that. There's many, many eco leading economic indicators that, su that suggest that we're, do we're much more stable than yeah. we were and we're in much better shape. And it's just frustrating for me that they're trying to paint this picture that, you know, I hear Sean Hannity on Fox say, are we better off than we were seven years ago? And he goes, the answer is a resounding no. Well, what world is he living you know, in? If, I don't from understand. what stats, I need you to please <clears throat> project forward into what you think will happen come Monday in Philadelphia with <clears throat> Hillary Clinton and, and the DNC. W will she bring Bill Clinton? Is this the time she's going to really use his charming charisma? She better watch out because last time Bill spoke, they ran a poll online. Last time Bill spoke at the reelection campaign, uh, the reelection convention for Barack Obama, they ran a poll that said, vote now to elect Mitt Romney, to reelect Barack Obama, or to amend the Constitution to allow us to elect Bill Clinton to a third term. Oh, wow. And Bill Clinton won that poll for about a week after the convention. Wow. That's how good his speech was. So wow. Hillary has held him back a little bit because everyone needs to know that this is her show. 
and she'll strategically know when to bring him bring him forward. I would say that what to look for and the contrast, as I said before, is there'll be a lot of specific specifics, a lot of substance, a lot of solutions, a lot of answers for how we can work together to address some of these problems and and how to you know. But th there won't be this rhetoric and these slogans and this cheerleading. There will be very specific policy issues. I just want to tell you one yes. quick thing. Yeah. We did a fundraiser for the Clintons. And um, the president had to use the bathroom. It was at my brother Alex's house, and he had said, Secret Service, take him up into the bathroom and let him use my, my private bathroom up in my home yeah. in the Hamptons. Yeah. Secret Service brought him there, and uh, they're all standing outside the door, and President Clinton walks into my brother's bathroom, and my mother was in there. <gasps> and my Oops. mother was using the bathroom. Oh, no. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> So the, what do you do? Do you the, get up? Do you cover up? No, 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 President Hello, Clinton. President. What I'm told is yeah. the president walked in and went, uh, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> and my mother was, oh, yeah, God. that was a famous moment in Baldwin history That's right there. That's amazing. I'm, I'm putting you on the spot. <clears throat> Who will America vote? Who will they elect? Oh, I think no, there's no question. I think elect? we could, I think Donald Trump is going to be taken to the woodshed in the Electoral College. And I think we could have like a Reagan Mondale like real, real humiliation, and I'm hoping that uh, that's that's where we go. I think I understand some of the frustration. I understand the attraction to an anti-establishment candidate who's not a Beltway insider, who's not a political lifer, who kind of shoots from the lip, doesn't sound like all the other politicians. Donald Trump's not the guy. Okay, we'll be re-racking this for sure. We'll be using that clip for months to come. Thank you more with William Baldwin. Fascinating stuff. More BT after this. You think